In this video, we're going to talk about the secret to a successful planted tank. Stay tuned. Now, I've been trying to figure out why I've been getting the same questions over and over again. And I asked them, hey, have you watched my beginner series to plant a tank? And the answer I get back is yes, I watched it. But I still don't understand this, I still don't understand that. And the more I explain it to kind of just move up to the advanced features, it's, it's the, some people still don't get it. I'm wondering why. What, what is it that I'm missing? Now, this channel is all about aquariums, and if you want to learn more about aquariums or you want to discuss aquariums and you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you'll know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. So why is this? I did a little research. I was trying to figure out, went back and looked at my videos and just watched them. Now, I binge watch my own videos, okay? Now, okay, that sounds weird, but I'm trying to figure out what is it that I'm missing? What is it that I'm not teaching? And then I did a post in my Facebook group and asked people, look, before you pull up Google, before you do anything, answer me this question. And from that, I realized what it was. It's the most basic ultimate secret that everyone should know about growing for planted tanks. Now, when I reveal this, some of you might say, well, I already know this, and then go somewhere else. Now, before you do that, if you agree with me on this, that this is something that someone must learn before they can do a successful planted tank, Stay and keep watching to help the, you know, the video along and get the message out. Now, are you ready for this? The ultimate secret to the success of keeping a planted tank? Okay, but this probably won't surprise you. And it's simply this. Get an understanding about how plants grow and how the photosynthesis process works. That's it. That's the secret. That's what I haven't taught yet in any of my videos. Now, in my beginner to the planted tank video, I just went and just jumped that. I just went and said, look, this is what you need to provide the plants, but not why. And that is the biggest missing key here. Why? Why do you need to supply plants for more highlighting? Why do you need to supply plants for more CO2? And why do you need nutrients? Now, for those guys who are about to go and say, well, I want to learn, but I don't want to learn all the mumble, jumble, technical, science, mubu, jubu, whatever, right? So we're going to try to do this without all the mumble, jumble, scientific, mubu, jubu, boo, 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 boo. And we're going to try to explain it the Chung way, okay? The weird way that Chung tries to explain everything. And that, my friends, is simply one word. Pasta. Get it? Got it? Pasta. No? Not yet? Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to assume sometime in your life you have cooked pasta or ramen or, or something like that to that effect. If you haven't, you need to get out of the rock you live under and learn how to cook damn pasta. But for those of the guys that don't know how to cook pasta, great news, because you're gonna learn how to cook pasta and learn about photosynthesis. So it simply goes like this. Turn on the fire on your stove. Fill up a pot with water. Put the pot on the stove. Wait till the water boils. You would need the water to boil. Then you add your pasta into the pot. Let it boil some more and cook the pasta and suddenly, ta-ting, you have pasta, you have food. You're like that one, ta-ting. I, I, I did all the special sound effects. I paid so much just for that little ta-ting sound effects for you guys. Okay, simple. That's how you make pasta. Now, what if you want to make more pasta? Maybe because you're super hungry, you like to eat tons of pasta, that's your thing. And the more you eat, the more and big and fat you get if you don't exercise, but that, that's the whole thing. You know, the more food you have, the more you eat, the more bigger and faster you grow. Or you have a party and you're having a ramen party or whatever. And you have to cook for 20 people. So you're going to need a lot more pasta, a huge pot with lots of water to put all that pasta in to cook. And you need lots of fire to boil. If it's going to be one small little fire, it's going to take forever to boil that big pot. You understand that yet? Cool. So that's the pasta story. I don't know if it's much of a story. But that'll be the pasta story. It'll be our story. It's something that we share together. You and I. You and I. Sorry, I can't point. Okay, enough of the filler mumbo jumbo thing. Now we're going to talk about photosynthesis. Plants have this cycle called photosynthesis. It is the process of making food for themselves. In order for this to work, they need three things. This is the three major factors of Plants, regular plants, not aquatic plants, regular plants. And that's simply sunlight, 
CO2, and water. Now, if you watched my beginner series to Planet Tank, you'll notice that the three major factors is actually different. Well, because it does have to change because we're dealing with different types of plants, aquatic plants. But we'll get to that in a bit. Let's look at the word photosynthesis. Photo, meaning light. Synthesis, meaning bring together and put together or cycle to, to, to bring things together. So there's two stages of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, got it? Two stages. Think of it that way. It's really easy. So for lighting, the plants get it from the sun, obviously. That is our you know, main thing that keeps us alive, that, that creates life, sun. Well, it's also carbon, but we're not going to get into that mumbo jumbo. Now, plants get water from the soil, from the roots that are buried into the soil. Think of it as a straw. It's sucking up water into the leaves to produce photosynthesis. But let's not discount the fact that nutrients also comes from the soil. It comes through the water, the roots it sucks up, or it just comes from the roots itself in the ground. Okay, so just remember that. And finally, it uses CO2, which the CO2 is plenty, plentiful in our air that we breathe because we breathe in the oxygen, we expel CO2. CO2 is also produced different ways, but plants use CO2 also for the photosynthesis process. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, there are actually two stages to photosynthesis, okay? You got the first stage, which is called photosystem two. You got the second stage is called photosystem one. Now, the numbering is backwards, but that's a whole scientific reason of why it's backwards. Just for right now, all you know, there's two parts, okay? The first stage, photo, which is photosystem two, does this. It takes the sunlight, takes the water, mixes it up, causes a reaction, and creates a lot of energy, just tons of energy. In our parable of pasta, this is akin to lighting the stove on fire, putting the pot of water on the stove and letting it boil. That's what's going on right now. It's creating a lot of energy in the water itself so it's boiling. And the plant is creating a lot of energy. So this is also where the oxygen get expelled from the plant because part of the byproducts from that, that whole system that's going on there is a lot of scientific mumble jumbo. We're skipping all that. You don't need to know that. It's that it does create a byproduct of oxygen. But it creates lots of tons of energy into the plant itself. That energy goes into stage two, photosystem one. Now, in stage two, all that energy is pent up. Now that energy is going to use the CO2 that it collects from the leaves of the plant and create a whole new chemical. And that chemical is something that the plant's going to use to make a lot of things, like food, glucose. Okay, that's what plants eat. It creates the food and stores it within itself. It also takes some of that chemical and reuses it again in stage one for the whole light and water mixing and, you know, reaction and all that stuff that's going on. At this stage of our parable, it's when we're putting the pasta in the boiling water. You ever do that? You put pasta in the boiling pot of water and then the boiling just kind of ceases down and you just got to wait for it to boil back up again and cook the pasta. That is stage two of photosynthesis. And then of course that byproduct is when you're finished, you got pasta, you got food to eat. Now it's important to note in stage two, if there are no CO2 for the plants to use, then it will suddenly kick in to a process where it tries to take in the oxygen and create a different process that creates a different chemical. A chemical that the plant can't use, it's wasted. So the plant suddenly can't feed itself. You can't become nutrient for itself and it starts dying, okay? So that's why it's important that we have CO2 for this process. Now does that make sense to you, the whole parable with the uh, you know ramen or pasta with photosynthesis? I'm just kinda trying to you know use ramen or cooking noodles or pasta or ramen as an example of how the process actually works, not the whole scientific uh, you know, term. Because pasta in this case would be our CO2, and pasta is not CO2, right? I hope you know that. You know that. Please tell me you know that. You know that. Okay, let's go on. Now, of course, we're talking about aquatic plants because that's what we're making. We're making a plant tank. We're making um, plants grow underwater. So over the millions of millions and billions of evolution of the years, some plants have adapted to grow in water. During this time, there are other types of plants that's grown to, to adapt to its environment, like stem plants. So we talk about stem plants, and some stem plants actually take in the water and nutrients instead of the roots, because some stem plants actually don't have that much roots to begin with to, to work in the system. And of course, the other plants like java fern, the popular java fern, the anubias and stuff, they're all rhizome plants. So all their roots are actually exposed into the water. So it's taking all the nutrient and water through the roots that way. So those are some of the difference between regular plants and aquatic plants. 
Now, when we create a plant tank, we're creating an artificial environment, okay? So, in the whole scheme of things, when we start doing plant tanks, the problem is we don't have that soil that carries all that nutrients. We have water. Okay, that's given. We're making a fish tank. It has water. But in this case, we're assuming that you are using water. Okay, let's get that out of the way. So, there's plenty of water for the plants. But, because we're creating this artificial environment, there's no nutrients, right? This is why we use soil. This is why we use stuff like aqua soil and the other types of soil that helps plants grow, that creates that nutrient-rich environment so that the roots can use it. And this is also why we dose the tank, okay? Dose the water column. It's for those plants that actually takes the nutrients of the water through itself, through the body of the plant itself. So in this case, we take out the whole water portion of the three major factor triangle and we stick in nutrients. And that's the changes to the three major factors of aquatic plants. And that's what I mentioned in my beginners uh, to plant a tank primer. Now remember back in the beginning, I mentioned about the whole ramen thing or the whole pasta thing where we're either feeding a really hungry person or 20 people, right? We need a lot of more ramen, a bigger pot of water and a bigger fire to actually stoke and boil that water quicker because if it's small little fire, it's gonna take forever to do boil that water and if it takes forever to boil that water it's going to take forever to actually cook the noodles or the ramen or the pasta. Same concept with photosynthesis. The more light you give the plants the more it's going to produce that energy okay so a lot more energy means a lot more activity a lot more you know just energy to do things okay which moves on to stage two where it takes a lot of the CO2, the nutrients you have already provided, and it's gonna create a lot of that chemical that's gonna create a lot of that glucose, that food, okay? More food for the plants to eat, the more they're gonna eat. So the more they're gonna eat, the faster they're gonna grow, okay? And if you have give them all the nutrients that they need, they're gonna grow strong, bright, pretty, and lush. Now there's a lot more coming. There's a series on the lighting, and the series on CO2, and a, and a series on nutrients, a more uh, in-depth series. So make sure that you are subscribed so you can see those later on on this channel. As well, please leave a comment down below. Let me know if I got anything wrong or anything you want to just clarify for other people, for other newbies that come along and watch this video and read the comments down below. And remember to like this and share it where you can. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.